Hey everyone. Hey there. We're here to go ahead and let you know that California still has money for students pursuing a post-secondary education. My name is Michael Lemus. And I'm Judith Gutierrez. And this is Financial Paid. Today we're going to be talking about affordable education for all. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the California Dream Act application, otherwise known as the CADA, and the Dream Act Service Incentive Grant. You've probably heard of the FAFSA application, which is the free application for federal student aid. But not many people have heard of the California Dream Act application, or as Michael mentioned, the CADA application. So CADA is a California's application that allows undocumented and non-resident students to apply for financial aid, regardless of their DACA status. So while we're on the topic of the CADA, it's also important to know when did it actually start. Mm -hmm. So it actually was created in 2012. And like yeah. you said, Judith, it's actually for students that are undocumented, regardless of DACA status. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate to actually be here in a state like California, where there are lots of resources for undocumented students. And that definitely includes the CADA. No, that's correct, Michael. And it is a fairly new application, so I don't think many people have heard about it. And there's definitely been a lot of barriers mm -hmm. to it, regardless of this era we're in where we are trying to be more inclusive and mindful of the needs of our undocumented population. I did want to also clarify that the CADA application is not just for all undocumented students, but it is specific to undocumented and non-resident students mm -hmm. here in California who qualify for non-resident exemption under the Assembly Bill 540, so also known as AB 540. Well, thank you for that, Judith. Yeah. What we hear from students oftentimes when we're out there tabling at college fairs or at mm -hmm. high schools is that they're afraid of applying for financial aid. Yeah. We're a government organization, we're a state agency. Yes. We know that there's some apprehension sometimes or fear just to getting um, just to getting financial aid in general. So mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that? Yeah, well, I think it goes without saying, and we can't say this enough, is we are a government state agency. Mm -hmm. We're the California Student Aid Commission serving California students. Absolutely. We're not a federal government agency, so we do respect the privacy of all our applicants That's and do great. not share their information with the federal government. And you're right, and to your point of barriers to mm -hmm. applying mm -hmm. for the California Dream Act application is one, we don't talk about it enough. We always so hear about the FAFSA application, and sometimes these students, especially students in yeah. vulnerable communities, are too afraid to even ask or know that this information exists. So it's always important for our listeners out there to make sure you mention the FAFSA and the California Dream Act application Absolutely. when talking to students. Yes. And just given the political climate we've seen nowadays as well, we understand um, at CSAC and we recognize that there is that fear, to your mm -hmm. point, Michael, yeah. of just applying and putting your information on you know, this application that is telling you, you might be likely eligible yes. for financial aid. So we do encourage um, our students and our undocumented students, especially, especially in this episode, to just apply. Awesome. Apply and your information it will be taken care of and respected. Thanks, Judith. Well, it sounds like we have a lot of resources available here at the California Student Aid Commission. So why don't we yes. go ahead and jump right in? Of course. And I'm so excited to introduce our special guest, Amy Eberhardt from the California Student Aid Commission, who serves as the Associate Governmental Program Analyst. And she will actually be talking about the brand new California Dream Act Service Incentive Grant. So do you want to take it away, Michael? Absolutely. Well, welcome, Amy. Thank you so much for joining us. So why don't we start off by you telling us a little bit about yourself? Oh yeah, sure. Hi Judith. Hi Michael. I hope you guys are doing it great today. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I am a first generation or was a first generation college student. I actually started attending a local community college right after high school um, here in Sacramento. Um, and then from there I transferred to a four year. But you know, I was always um, granted the opportunity of receiving financial aid. And one of my first work experiences was actually working at a financial aid office as a federal work study student. Um, so I know how important programs like this, like the DSIG program or the Dreamers Service Incentive Grant program are for students, especially for undocumented students who don't always have those resources available to them. Mm -hmm. No, thank you for that, Amy. And so we know the California Dream Act, and I'm going to refer to it as CADA from now on. This is a little shorter, but the CADA is the financial aid application for undocumented students, regardless mm -hmm. of their DACA status. But we've been also hearing about this new program that you mentioned, the California Dream Act uh, Service Incentive Grant. And can you explain the correlation between the two? What, what is to be expected? What comes first? What is needed? Um, and then also just a little bit about what DSIG is. 
Sure. Um, so as you mentioned, the short name of the Dreamer Service Incentive Grant is DSIG. Um, so the correlation between the CADA and the DSIG program is that in order to apply for DSIG, you do have to be a California Dream Act student. Um, on top of that, in order to apply for the program, you do have to have been offered a Cal Grant B. Um, so those are kind of the correlations between the CADA and the DSIG program. Got it. And you have to apply for the California Dream Act application, it seems. You can't just pick which one you want to apply for. Correct. It has to be a California Dream Act student. So I did want to also clarify just for our listeners and our viewers um, today, we have been referring to this program in three different ways. DSIG, because it's short for the Dreamer Service Incentive Grant, which is that second way of mentioning it or referring to it. But also, we have been more mindful about referring to this program as the California Dream Act Service Incentive Grant. Can you explain why we're maybe stepping away a little bit from using the word dreamer a lot? Mm. Yeah, so uh, we realized that when we use the word dreamers, it doesn't include all our students, undocumented students. So that's why we differentiate the difference between California Dream Act students and um, the, just a dreamer program for the DSIG program. Yeah, well, thank you for that, Amy. So as you know, at the California Student Aid Commission, we love to use acronyms. So we're referring to this <laughs> as DSIG to go ahead and actually just keep it simple. Yes. So with that being said, what type of students are actually eligible to qualify under the DSIG? Yeah, um, so students that are California Dream Act applicant students and students that have been offered a Cal Grant B should apply to the DSIG program using the grant application. Awesome. And how much money can they actually qualify for? Yeah, they can get up to $3,000 per academic year. Um, that is split up amongst the quarters or system, uh, sorry, semesters, depending on what kind of institution they're attending. Awesome. And I'm curious to know, because there is an amount, uh, uh, since it's a fairly new program, there is mm -hmm. an amount tied to the awards we can give. Do you know how many awards are available for students? Yeah, there's about 2,500 students that would be uh, accepted into the DSIG program. Um, right now, we haven't uh, met that marker just yet, so I do strongly encourage any student that's interested in applying, and again, if they're a California Dream Act student and have been offered a Cal Grant B, to apply. So thank you for that. So 2,500, and we haven't met the mark yet, so you hear that, you definitely have time to apply. And just to clarify as well, is there a deadline to this application, Amy? Um, so there isn't a specific deadline. We do encourage students to apply within the academic year that they want to receive the DSIG program. So as long as we receive the application prior to the academic year ending and they have enough time to complete their hours, um, they should be able to participate in the program. Thank you for that, Amy. And you did mention completing hours. And so I guess just to get a better understanding of how this program works, uh, where can students perform their service hours as part of the application? Yeah, definitely. And that's a very good question. So what I've noticed with um, the students that have been accepted into our program is that a lot of them are actually looking into their campus to see if there are any volunteer opportunities on their campus. You know, I've seen um, students apply for the financial aid office, and that's where they're going to be um, volunteering. I've seen students apply for their undocu resource center on campus. So any um, Cal Grant eligible school is eligible as a service organization for these D6 students to complete their service hours. Um, on top of that, um, if they, you know, let, let's say the student comes across an opportunity that isn't on campus, um, there is a possibility that as long as the, the school, um, the organization is a 501c3 or a nonprofit, or if they're part of a local federal um, government agency, um, that the students can volunteer at those organizations as well. Thank you, Amy. So it sounds like a student just has to apply to the California Dream Act Service Incentive Grant, or DSIG, put in some hours, and receive a grant in return for those community service hours. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And thanks for that, Amy. So it sounds like students can have a great opportunity here mm -hmm. with professional development experience, with volunteer experience. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about applying for DSIG, what's the easiest way for students to get connected? And how can they actually apply for this amazing opportunity that we have? Yeah, great question, Michael. So we do have a DSIG website. Um, it's csac.ca.gov forward slash DSIG. Um, and students can find all the information that they need for the DSIG program on there. There is a link on there as well, um, just to go over the instructions that they need to apply for the program. Um, and then uh, the instructions on when to submit that form is also on the form on the grant application. 
Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Amy. And I have one final question for you. So if a student ends up changing institutions, so let's say they're at a community college or they're at a CSU and they just decide to go ahead and transfer to another school. If they're under the DSIC program, mm -hmm. how does that work? Can they actually transfer over their award? What would you say? Yeah, so uh, students can definitely transfer their award to the in new institution that they are going to be attending. Just the student will need to submit a new grant application because we do want to make the fi financial aid administrators at that new campus aware that they do have a DSIG student on campus. Um, on the grant application itself, there is a section for the financial aid administrators to complete, um, and that's the section that the new institution will need to uh, fill out for the student. Awesome. Well, thank you for that helpful information, Amy. And Amy, we just want you to reflect a little bit on the work you're doing and just thank you again for the work you and the committee and the team has put into this program. And just ask you if you have any words of inspiration for, you know, maybe your younger self or a student who may be considering applying for these programs. Yeah, um, I always kind of reflect on my own personal um, path, right? I was a federal work study student, so that's a federal program that allows students to participate to work on campus. So I see DSIG um, as an opportunity for students to connect with their campus, one, or a service organization that will help them further their career after they graduate from college. You know, through the federal work study program that I participated in, working in a financial aid office, that's how I was able to get you know, the job that I have now working at the Student Aid Commission. Um, so I'm really excited for the students to apply for this program. This is a great opportunity, not only to just give back to your community, but also, you know, professionally develop yourself and also um, to, you know, be more successful overall. Yes. Now, thank you so much, Amy, for being here with us today. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad I could have I could be here with you guys. Thanks, Amy. That was some really, really powerful material. And we're excited to go ahead and actually talk about that further today because as you mentioned, Judith, at the very beginning of this conversation, a lot of people don't talk about the California Dream Act application. And now we know that we have this amazing program called DSIG. In addition to. Yes, in addition to. It's a brand <laughs> new program. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of really good information that CSAC's putting out there, and we really want people to be aware of it. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and actually talk about busting a myth today. So let's talk about our myth buster of the day. So a lot of people think that if their parents are actually undocumented, that they can't actually apply for financial aid. What do you have to say about that, Judith? Oh, Michael, that is definitely some misinformation, mm -hmm. and it's it's not surprising um, that we hear questions like this. But we do want to make it clear that it is a myth it is. in and of in and of itself. Students applying for financial aid know that your parents' immigration status does not affect your mm, application. Great point. If you are a student applying and you are permanent resident or U.S. citizen, you should still apply for the FAFSA application. It is your immigration status that essentially affects the application you would be filling out. And so it is important that we mention you do not fill out both applications. Mm, yes. You have to pick between great the point. FAFSA or the California DREAM Act application. Those are the two yes. big applications for financial aid. And if you, as the student applying, are undocumented, regardless of DACA, you must apply for the California DREAM Act application. But to the myth, Michael, <laughs> if your parents are undocumented, but you are not, as the student, you must still apply for the FAFSA application. Thank you for that, Judith. And I think that's really important to discuss because in a state like California, we do actually have these resources for undocumented students, or students that have undocumented parents, if you're a mixed status family, we have those resources here in California. And it's so important now more than ever as you yes. discuss the landscape of everything that's just going on with politics and just all the misinformation out there. It's now so, so important for our students and their families to become aware of that. Well, thank you for joining us for another great episode of Financial Paid. Thank you. As a reminder, it's very important that when it comes to accessing financial aid that you apply via the free application for federal student aid or the California Dream Act application. And if you need help in applying for any of those applications, you can actually attend one of our Cash for College workshops or webinars where we actually assist you in helping to apply for financial aid. So see you next time on Financial Paid. See you next time. Bye. Bye.